I'd like to bring in Democratic Congressman Donald McEachin of Virginia. Congressman, uh, two years later, your reflections on two years ago and where you think we are today, have we made any progress? Have we moved forward? Or are we where we were two years ago? Two years ago, Reverend, was horrible. And by the way, thank you for allowing me to come on your show. Um, but to be honest with you, Reverend, I think we're moving backwards. I think things are worse now than they were two years ago as we witness these mass shootings in, in a weekend and as we uh, witness the prol proliferation of guns all across our country. When we look at the open hate, the open anti-Semitism, Jews will not replace us and all kinds of things being said openly and loudly, and the fact that they were rallying to preserve the statue of a Confederate general who was guilty of treason, trying to overthrow the government of the United States to preserve slavery. And the president of the United States said there were fine people on both sides. The purpose of it was to defend a Confederate general statue who was guilty of treason. And then two years later, we see this president dealing with a manifesto of a shooter that used his language about an invasion. How much of this do you lay the tone of us going backwards using your analysis on the feet of the president, to the feet of the president? Well, the president has to own this. You know, in the past, we've had Democratic and Republican presidents stand up and articulate American values and push back against hate. But this president hasn't done that. This president has used the buzzwords, the dog whistles, and, and whatnot to make sure that folks know that it's okay to behave in the manner that they're behaving. And so he's allowed this dark underbelly, if you will, to come forward. And, and now we see the consequences of his words. Now, in the two years that we uh, have just marked today, we've had the blackface scandal of the governor of, of your state and other office, uh, uh, other office holders there. We've had other tensions. We've seen police cases around the country from Sacramento to Houston, none of which have we seen an aggressive move by this president. What can the Congress do? to deal with this seemingly regression, and again, quoting you saying we're going backwards, in terms of racial justice and fairness, uh, because clearly it does not seem after two and a half years going into three years that this White House intends to do anything, if anything, uh, have uh, given oxygen uh, to those that are supremacist. They absolutely have fanned the flames. Look, the House has already passed a resolution condemning hate, condemning bigotry. Uh, we'd love to see the Senate take up that resolution and pass it, um, but the chances of that are not, are not high. But the House has done that. But what we really need to do is grab the bull by the horns and institute common sense gun safety measures, universal background checks, uh, banning high, high capacity magazines. That is the the attachment that goes on to these assault weapons that carry the bullets and, all, and, and banning assault weapons. I said on this show last night that uh, the banning of assault weapons is really a pro-police uh, measure because policemen are running into dangerous way if there's a mass shooting and they're being outgunned. And if you really love police, why would you want to put them in that position? When you look at the shooting in Dayton, Ohio, the police showed up in one or two minutes and nine people were already dead. So you can't uh, say that if everybody had a gun, they could defend themselves. The guy in El Paso went to Walmart in a carry state where everybody can all carry a gun and Walmart sells guns and he had no fear. So all of these excuses and rational uh, uh, rationalizing why we don't need to ban assault weapons. I think these two uh, cases last weekend alone wipes a lot of that off the table, Congressman. Oh, you're absolutely right. And, you know, we have done it before. We actually banned assault weapons. Joe Biden led the way, wrote the bill that banned assault weapons in 1994, I believe, and high-capacity magazines. But it lasted 10 years, and the Congress deliberately in 2004 let it expire. And the fact is that in that period from the 94 crime bill, which part 
that I opposed and marched on, but they did have a banning of assault weapons in that bill that Joe Biden uh, helped engineer during the Clinton years. Uh, we saw mass shootings go down in that 10-year period, and they uh, uh, let it expire. And we've seen almost the normalizing of mass shootings uh, in the last couple of years. Absolutely. I mean, it just goes to show that if you remove the weapon from the, from the equation, you get results. We did that with assault weapons. We saw the results. Crime went, uh, the mass shootings went down, as you said. And of course, when, when it expired, the, uh, we've seen the mass shootings uh, come back to life. And none of us are downplaying that there needs to be resources in mental health. There needs to be uh, some of the other things the president did say. But if somebody's holding a gun to me, I want the police to come in and first disarm him before we figure out whether they have a mental health problem or they're a hater. And as long as they have the arms, this man inside of one minute killed nine people in that bar in Dayton, Ohio, and the police got there right there and they were nine already dead. There's no reason for people to have those kind of weapons that could execute that quickly. None whatsoever. And to be absolutely truthful with you, Reverend, if the police had not already been in the area, there'd be more than nine dead. 